Hi everyone, welcome to Transitioning Your Lab Resources to Digital. Um, we're going to get started here in just a second. We appreciate you being with us. Just let me go ahead and share my screen and we can be off to the races. Um, so this is Transitioning Your Lab Resources to Digital. I'm Andrea Bergella. I'm the Labs Marketing Manager here at Macmillan Learning. And with me, I have Danielle Buckley, our Labs Program Manager. Hi, everyone. Uh, just very briefly, I want to give a demo on how to use GoToWebinar. So this should be something similar to what you're seeing on your screen. Um, there's a pop-out feature right here to um, pop out any of these bars. So if you want to ask questions, please use the question pane right here. Um, you can toggle to full screen right here with this. Um, and then if you ever lose us, there should be this little flower at the bottom of your uh, screen. And it'll either be blue or orange. Mine's orange. Um, but that should bring the webinar right back up on your screen if you ever lose us. So just a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to be going over some of our ebook options for labs, um, interactives and videos that we have in our database, simulations, and um, student entered data activities. So these are the four topics we're going to cover. Um, I I'm not going to spend too much time talking to you guys. I would like to go ahead and, and get into um, the options that you guys have come here to see. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to Danielle so she can go through some of these options for you. And again, we're going to go over ebooks, interactives and videos, simulations, and student entered data. And Danielle, I have made you the presenter. Great. Uh, Thank you so much. So um, just to get started, I uh, want to double check that you guys can see my screen all right. Is that showing up? Yes. OK, great. Um, and by way of quick introduction, um, as Andrea mentioned, I am the Labs Program Manager here at Macmillan Learning. Uh, my background is actually in chemistry. I went to the University of Colorado at Boulder for graduate school uh, before transitioning from education um, in all my TA and teaching experience to the publishing world, um, partly so that I could work on really interesting and cool products like the ones we're going to show you um, to help students in the laboratory space. So um, what I'm showing right now uh, is our Hayden McNeil online course platform. The great thing about this is it is based in Moodle, so it should look pretty familiar to your, you know, maybe your campus LMS and be fairly easy to use. Um, I can easily expand all my topics and close them. So you get a sneak peek into what we'll be walking through. Um, one note is that some of the products we're going to talk about are um, you know ready to go things you can adopt even for this summer or fall others are things that um, they are custom provided solutions so they're things that we would need to work with you on to build so we would only be able to help you implement them for your fall term um, so i'm going to get started with in with that the pdf ebook um, we have it linked out here in this uh, like demo playground course um, but it is something that we can also create separately. So for those of you that have used this before, um, this is hosted within Vital Source. I can actually go out to my um, Vital Source bookshelf and see everything that I have in here. And the first one I'm going to take you to is actually for IO Lab. So for those of you that are physicists on the line, this is our e-manual. It is one of our products that is ready to go. So if it's something you need um, for summer or interested in implementing, that is possible. Um, this is for university or calculus-based physics courses for those labs. Um, it was actually written by Tom Hemmick um, out of Stony Brook. 
um, using the IOLAB device, which Macmillan Learning produces. So this is actually a device used in physics labs. Um, and he wrote an accompanying lab manual that is really great um, and easy to implement for any instructor. Uh, this is hosted, again, as an e-manual. So the nice thing here is that we are able to present all the background information as well as integrating um, or embedding short videos directly within the e-manual so that students can see how to use the device, how to perform calculations. Um, and then, of course, we actually do have many, you know, of the calculations, the equations, um, and different images in here. So uh, this is a great option for those that need something right away and that this will work for them. That you, can be, you are able to adopt this and then your students can either rent or purchase the IO Lab device from Macmillan directly. Um, if there's something you want that's a little more custom, um, I'm going to go ahead and show another option that we have. So our Hayden McNeil custom publishing is really well known for our print custom publishing. Um, but we can also make digital versions of pretty much anything. And so this is something that's not ready to go out of the box. This is something that we would need to work with you to create ahead of your fall term. Um, but this is, you can see, this is for the University of Mississippi. Um, I can go in and I can see my whole table of contents here um, or copyright page. I can go in and I can choose a specific lab that I want to take a closer look at. And the reason we like to highlight this is because many of you are unsure at this point if you're going to be in the laboratory or in the classroom in the fall. And so this is a great option because if you're uncertain, you can still move forward with publishing your lab manual digitally like I'm showing here. Um, so that students will have access to it, even if the bookstore and the lab space is closed in the fall, you'll, you can still have access to the digital version of the manual. And then we have these great, um, what we call uh, fillable worksheets that can be a part of this. So this can be within your, you know, e-lab manual, or we can create these just as standalones. And what students can do is they can print this to bring it to the physical lab if it turns out you will be meeting in the fall, or they can have this online version. I have one already open and prepped um, that allows them to enter their information. I'm going to pretend that Andrea is my TA. Um, and so they can enter their information here um, and then they can save this and they can actually turn it in. So in this case, this is something that can work for the fall, even if it turns out you need to remain virtual um, by providing, you know, students slightly alternative procedures to what's in here and they can still fill out this worksheet. Um, this can also be something that you have them do as a pre-lab activity where they're, you know, entering information. And we actually have some instructors that have just provided their students some videos or data to offset the in-lab experience, but this still allows them to use the worksheet as planned. Um, so again, just, just a few options here of how we are able to digitize uh, many different things, uh, whether you find that you will definitely be holding fall classes or if you're unsure and there's a chance um, you'll need to take it virtual, these solutions can work. Um, and then I will point out, we do have this Dropbox feature as part of the Hayden McNeil online course. This allows students to add a submission much like they would do for Dropbox or uploading something to your LMS. They can just add that submission and then you as an instructor can see um, what's, been, what's been provided and review that and make any comments directly in the platform. So this just kind of houses it all in one place and makes it easy um, to provide them the virtual lab manual. You can have the fillable worksheet within that or as a separate file and then the lab report Dropbox um, to allow them to turn in their assignments. So kind of within that as well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we have available as a pre-lab um, option. So this could be, once again, something that um, you want to provide to your students because you're going to be meeting in person and you want them to come a little more prepared. 
or it could be something that um, you want to have them do uh, you know at home because it's part of the lab supplement while you're having to teach remotely um, so I just went and reset it I am in the instructor view so I had to reset my preview to the student version um, and I'm just going to quickly show you they're just some simple quizzes we put together and this was one of our custom offerings so what we do in this case is we take an instructor's original content it could be um, a quiz that you already provide it could be a pre-lab activity or a post-lab activity that you have written in a different way um, and we can help convert that into different question types that are auto graded um, such as the multiple choice multiple select um, or drop down we have a number of different options um, including an essay style module that allows students to just um, have a free entry point where they can they can put in um, chemical equations mathematical equations or text uh, to answer their pre-laboratory questions um, so there's a lot of different options here that can kind of take it digital um, using your own content that our digital project managers will help you to actually implement within our platform. Um, and again, that is one of our custom options. So any material that you already have, if you've already made short videos, if you've already made um, or have images, pictures of your actual laboratory equipment, our digital project managers will mm -hmm. help you create these quiz quizzes um, you know, for you. So a couple of other options we have um, as well. I won't walk through each and every one of these, um, but as I'm going to show you these, I will mention that we actually have what we call our Hayden McNeil content collection, and it's like a library of different content that we've created. So um, that includes lab manuals. So if you need experiments, don't have experiments, we do have some of those from our other authors. We also have things like this, this tutorial on Excel, or some videos about different techniques in the lab. So you can pull from any of those um, to actually implement within your course. Anything we've already created, we can pull into your course and you're welcome to use. Uh, again, we are, we are a little bit limited in what we can do for customization ahead of the coming terms. Um, so these are usually something that we would often create from scratch for an instructor, and we can still do that, um, but it would most likely be for um, a spring course. But right now you have access to and are welcome to use anything we have in our existing library, um, which includes thousands of lab experiments, animations, tutorials, um, and videos. So this is just a brief demonstration um, of one that even includes a, a short you know quiz um, within the tutorial to make sure that students uh, have read and understand what it is they're reading um, but then i'll also show you another type of animation we have so this is a simpler one this is just a simple animation to show students you know proper technique for reading the meniscus on a burette um, and in this case, it could be used with a titration. So it is just an animation that we have. Some instructors have used this within their e-manuals to demonstrate it, but other instructors have used the animation that we provide within our content collection library to create their own um, simple quizzes around it to make sure that students understand what they're going to be doing before they come into the lab, or they can use this um, if they find if they found that they're actually um, having to remain uh, online in the fall they can use that to actually create a quiz that can help offset the lab um, so the next sort of section that i'm going to show you um, has to do with our lab simulations so most of what i've talked about so far um, you know I've, I've mentioned that these are custom solutions because it does require us to build the course for you. Um, and we're pulling in different assets or taking your own original content to put it together within this course. And so we can do that with these simulations we have as well. This is part um, of our CERT custom services where we can pull in these assets. Um, but I do wanna mention that this is actually one of our national products. 
So I'm switching over to a different tab just briefly um, so, so I can show it to you from this perspective. We actually have our chemistry lab simulations and our biology lab simulations um, as, a, as a nationally offered product where you basically just get this library of labs. Um, each one has an e-manual and within that the simulation is linked. There are also assignments pre-made. There's one that's um, a short answer so it's that essay style uh, questions that I was I was describing previously as well as multiple choice which would be automatically graded um, and we also offer that for biology so for chemistry it would cover topics that are relevant for introductory chemistry general chemistry or GOB for biology it would cover introductory biology mostly for non-majors um, but some would work for majors or other disciplines and then we do have some microbiology offerings as well so again these these are available um, for adoption as is. You can adopt our lab simulations product and just have access to all of the simulations, e-lab manuals, and assignments that accompany them. Um, however, what we wanted to show you today is how they can be implemented within this full course solution. So you can see that I right now have them um, in a different dropdown. Um, but what I actually can do is I can create pre-lab assignments around these. Um, and then have my e-manual um, implemented within this space, similar to what I'm showing now. So this is showing you how all of the background information is provided here, um, just like a student would have. And then they would turn the page virtually to access the actual procedure. And as I scroll down, you can see we've laid out the procedure, the description of what the student should be doing whenever they're using the simulation. They would actually launch the simulation by clicking on the icon um, and then they can start their lab. Each simulation uh, prompts the student to immediately start by using PPE or their personal protective equipment. And we do give the option to enter the lab or skip the animation that plays there. I'm gonna skip it in case anyone has any uh, motion sensitivity. So that is just an example of how we have um, incorporated accessibility standards into the simulations. Um, we have keyboard accessibility, screen reader um, implementation, and anywhere else where there are contrast requirements or other things for accessibility standards, we've implemented those as well. Um, so just to give you a quick description of the lab space, this is just one of our labs. Um, we always do have any chemicals or biologicals that um, a student needs to use on the top shelf, known as the material shelf. We then have our containers, which would be glassware or microscopes or microtubes on our middle shelf, our container shelf. Um, and then we would have any instruments such as my Bunsen burner or my balance or even my microscope would be on our instrument shelf. Um, and so to give you a quick preview, you can see I'm just clicking and dragging items to the bench. Um, I can interact with different things. With my balance, I can even zero it out and then add water. Um, and one thing I'll note is that whenever I'm doing this, you'll notice that I'm not following a specific procedure. So students do have that leeway to actually um, interact with this simulation as they want. They are free to explore. And for that matter, you as instructors are actually free to go into your lab manual and change the procedure because these simulations are designed to be very open-ended. Um, a few other things I'll note while I'm in here is whenever I am working, I have options to change the labels on any containers. Um, that's always an option, so now this is labeled as Beaker 1. But I also have different properties for different containers. So we know it's important, for example, for chemistry students to know how to read um, the meniscus on a burette or graduated cylinder. So similar to what I was showing in that animation, you know, those could be used together here in a custom course build because this in this lab, a student would need to double click to open up this meniscus view. Um, and then we do have the waste container where any waste material is expected to go and be disposed of before a student can move their empty glassware to the sink to be cleaned later. 
Um, just to point out a few of the navigation items I have now at the bottom of my screen, I do also have this nifty pause button. This allows me as a user, I can just pause what I'm doing real quick so that I can take different measurements. And it's also great for accessibility purposes. If a student that needs more time, um, you know, to take those measurements, to record those observations, can't quite observe a reaction happening that's just going on too quickly, they always have this pause button so that they can, they can take a little time to do that. So as I mentioned, these are um, open-ended. Of course, there's a limit to our programming. So, um, you know, we, we have certain things that you would probably notice are maybe not realistic um, in the way things interact with one another. And we ask, you know, that um, if there's anything that you find that is, um, you know, concerning, you can always let us know. But for the most part, these are, this procedure is completely editable so that you can use these simulations in any way that you would like. Um, and so that would be something, again, we do have our actual lab simulation product for chemistry and biology, um, but you can incorporate it into a custom solution as I'm showing here. And so the last thing I'm gonna show um, is what I have in my sort of third title tile here is actually um, what we refer to as our smart worksheet. So I talked about the fillable PDF, or I'm sorry, the fillable worksheet earlier um, that you saw where I would have my observations recorded and I would save this and upload it to my Dropbox. So this is one method for how you can actually um, have students still complete a lab and then upload it digitally. But this does require you or your TAs to hand grade uh, this experiment. But another option we actually have is we, through a partnership with a company called Learning Science, it's based in the UK, um, we can custom build these smart worksheets. So the smart worksheets are custom built, just like our um, original content lab manuals and other custom items. We would work with you directly um, to implement this. So we, we are nearing the end of time when we can create these ahead of even the fall semester. Um, so if you have any interest, please let us know. But whenever you go in here, a student would actually input their data direct, directly into this worksheet. And what we've done is programmed, um, and we actually have SNEEZ on staff that help in this programming, um, all of the expected data and any feedback that's specific to your experiment. So for example, with this spectrophotometry experiment, um, a student would need to indicate the maximum absorption. Uh, I've just put in the number six, and so we have it programmed in this case to make sure that we're warning a student that the minimum accepted value is actually 500 nanometers, and they need to go ahead and enter four significant figures. So if I go ahead and do 630, I'm still getting the warnings here. I'm also getting a warning about the scientific notation being ambiguous, so I need to go ahead and add a decimal and another zero. And now I can submit that and it's been accepted. Anywhere along here, we can actually adjust the points awarded. Um, so if there's data that you do want to assign points to or do not want to assign points to, that can be adjusted. So another thing we have here is, for example, a student would be entering different concentration and absorbance values. You can see my stock solution is given for me. I'm going to go ahead and enter the next um, absor absorbance value, and um, I'm putting it in longhand, so you can see, and it is telling me still the number of significant figures that I need to enter three. So I've entered my three significant figures, and I get a point for entering the correct number of significant figures and data within a range that's expected. The next one, however, I'm going to go ahead and enter in scientific notation. So 7.50, um, and the good news is students can use keyboard shortcuts like E, for example, to have the scientific notation appear as well as the times. And this is indicating that I need to complete it. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the negative four that I had above. So this is incorrect because I need to take half the concentration. And in this case, I did in fact lose points because my instructor assigned point values to entering data. Um, so I'm going to correct that and now submit it, and it's correct. 
So in this particular case, I did lose a point. I'm gonna quickly go ahead um, and finish entering the data here. So my last concentration point. And then moving over to absorbance, there's just one other feature to show. Um, if I start to enter this, you'll notice that it's saying three decimal places exactly. So that's um, something that we have here because it might be different for your equipment than for somebody else's. So I, my spectrophotometer may record three decimals or four digits total, um, but somebody else's might record five. So, you know, notice that there's a difference here with the number of decimals versus what we might refer to as sig figs. And this can be adjusted based on your equipment um, and what your laboratory needs are. So because of that, as I mentioned, we do make we do build these smart worksheets custom. Um, these are not just ready to go. So we do need some lead time. Um, and in this case, excuse me, in this case, um, it would we are nearing our deadline um, of before before mid-March to be able to create these for an instructor. So I'm moving through my smart worksheet. We're not gonna go through the whole thing, but there's a lot to point out here. So whenever I enter my mass, um, I'm going to enter something here and it's giving me a warning. Note that it's letting me know this is above the expected value, but I can still submit it and it's still accepted. Um, I can then go ahead and enter my uh, absorption readings here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make some some estimates there. And then I'm moving down here to my data analysis. So now that I've entered all of my data, I need to start thinking about the calibration curve I'm gonna build. And we don't have the actual graph in this particular example. I'm gonna show you another example momentarily with several different types of graphs and plots, um, partly because some instructors don't want students to see the data as it's being plotted, because they want them to answer these questions to make sure that they can correctly assign x and y axes and so on before then plotting it through in excel and that is another use case for how some instructors will use our smart worksheet so now i get into my curve analysis and i can either have again a plot here or my students were required to actually plot their calibration curve separately in excel but either way i would come to this point and I would go ahead and start entering um, my data. And, you know, I can enter the value of the slope and get four points. But when I enter the value of the intercept, I'm going to make a common student mistake and I'm going to forget my negative sign. So I'm submitting it without my negative sign and it's telling me that it's incorrect. And as a student, I might want to try and game the system a little. So I'm going to come back up here and say, you know, if I go ahead and change some of my plot data, it's going to reset it, and then I'm going to get another chance. So um, I'm going to change this from a 6 to a 3, and I'm going to submit. And when I do that, it wants me to confirm, because if in doing this, it's going to um, you know, affect some of the other data I've, I've input. So I'm going to confirm that I am actually going to do that. And now you'll notice it kept the other data I entered, but it did clear out my slope and other, other information. So now I need to um, re-enter this. So um, this is actually slightly different. I believe it was 17.56, 17.56. Um, and I can submit. And then the value of the intercept. So the intercept itself is gonna be very different. But I, as a student, am going to try and game the system. Um, again, I'm going to try and get full points, even though it's different, because I'm going to remember my negative sign. And um, I change the data. And what's actually going to happen is I still only got partial points because I was deducted the points of my original incorrect. So that's a nice um, you know, way that, that students are able to complete their calculations and get feedback, but you can make sure that they're not able to, um, you know, take advantage. So the last aspect of this that I'll show you real quick is a pretty cool feature we call our timeline feature. 
Um, I'm not going through the rest of this particular assignment, but a student and an instructor is able to turn on the timeline um, and they can actually play it to see all of the steps that were taken. So in this case, um, you know, I as a student can look at this to remember what I did, what I filled in, or I can go to you as my instructor and ask for help. And now you as an instructor are able to review the timeline and see where I might have went wrong. So where did I input incorrect information and need to try again? Um, alternatively, we do have reports from some instructors that say it's very useful to track students when they try and game the system, as I showed you. So um, this is a great tool, tool for many reasons. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you, I'm not actually going to take the time to graph, but I just did want to highlight the different graphing features that are possible. So in the experiment we just did, I would expect a calibration plot or a scatter plot. Um, and something like this could be graphed directly in there for students. In addition, you know, to show a few other examples of the types of data that could be graphed, you know, for example, calorimetry or titration. Um, we also have uh, simple bar charts or pie charts that could be in here, but then also something like a scatter 3D plot. So we have um, examples of how this can be used in more advanced experiments and with more advanced data. And the great thing is that this is something where you can create these plots and have students analyze them as part of their activity or you can provide data to students if you find yourself in a position in the fall where you have to take um, your labs online. So again, similar to those fillable worksheets, uh, the smart worksheets are a great option where we can help you create these digital resources for the fall term. Uh, but if you find yourself in a position where you need to go ahead and teach remotely in the fall or even the start of fall, this is something where you still have that option to provide students videos or data, and uh, students are able to analyze the data and still get some of the lab experience that you originally um, anticipated having for them. I've taken a lot of time to walk through a lot of different examples. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and stop and see, Andrea, do we have any questions where we wanna go back into anything or talk through something more specifically? Yeah, so I had a lot of questions about the recording for this webinar, so that's great. Um, everyone will receive an email tomorrow with the recording link in it, and you can share that with your colleagues, because I've had a lot of questions about how can we share this, um, which we love to see. So thank you so much, everyone, for your interest, um, and we are happy to help where we can. Um, I've reached out to a couple of you that had very specific questions. Um, please feel free to email me. Um, I'm the one who sends all the webinar inv invites. So all you have to do is reply to that invite. Um, and I'm happy to answer any of your super specific questions. Um, or if you need an introduction to your salesperson, I'm also happy to do that. So please, again, just um, reply to your webinar invite. I'm happy to help anybody who needs it. Um, we did have a question about grading lab worksheets um i think the question was actually about the pdf fillable worksheet oh. um so sure. those um once the student inserts their answers would need to be um saved and then uploaded to a dropbox either via our hidden McNeil online course or via your lms for hand grading so those pdf fillable forms are hand graded um, and then the smart worksheets are kind of the um, auto graded version of that. Um, and as Danielle so nicely put it, um, those are custom built, so they do take some time. So we do have um, a May deadline for that. So if you are interested in something like that, please contact us ASAP. We want to be able to help you. Um, and then here we go. Danielle is uh, <laughs> yeah, Dropbox. Um, and she's a very harsh grader, obviously, um, <laughs> deadline, and you didn't upload, upload it. Shame on you. Um, so let's see. And again, I want to thank everybody for the interest in the recording of the webinar. You all will receive an email um, with the recording link, and then this it will also be posted publicly 
Um, I apologize if anybody had audio issues. I think there were just a couple people who experienced a little audio blip. Um, and uh, I'm looking through it. It looks like there were Andrea questions about organic chemistry. Yes. So yeah. It was um, really yeah. Yeah. I did want to know. I don't. Maybe. I think this is where somebody mentioned the ebook. So yes, we do actually have our Morig Techniques Manual um, that's available through an ebook option. It is ready to go and available for adoption this summer, fall. Um, so this is in here, and you know, again, this is one where your sales rep or we can get you access to sample. Um, so this is focused on the techniques here. We um, we can actually work with you again if it's for fall um, to work on the lab manual as well. We do have some options there. So this one just happens to already be loaded in Vital Source, so it takes students through all the different techniques um, for organic chemistry that you would expect them to know. Um, so yeah, it was a great question. Yeah. And our content collection database does also have additional organic chemistry resources um, as well. So I did check with our, our team before this webinar because we have received a lot of questions about organic chemistry. Um, and we do have we do have some options there as far as maybe interactives or videos or things go. Um, we also have labs in there that are borrowable, um, if that's a word. Uh, uh, there was a question about microbiology and lab simulations. Um, we do have a few antibiotic sen sensitivity staining um, in P PCS of 16S RNA gene. Did I say that correctly, Danielle? I think it was pretty close. <laughs> and uh, I apologize, everybody. I yeah. am. Uh, I don't have a science background, so I'm doing my best here. Um, yeah, so microbiology, we do have a few labs that in the simulations that are appropriate. However, um, the focus is, is on the introductory biology, so things like antibiotic sensitivity, bacteria, basic microscopy, all appropriate for microbiology. Um, we, depending on the specific topics you're looking for, though, and what you teach, this may or may not be enough for you. Um, we have our future roadmap to expand. However, currently um, and in time for fall or spring of next year, uh, it would be limited to just what we have in our current library. Um, are these features available to students in Canada? Yes. <laughs> Uh, we work with um, customers in both the U.S. and Canada, um, and la the lab simulations are available as a standalone product in Canada as well, if that's what you're asking about. Um, yeah, um, and anyone, if you do not know your sales rep, again, please feel free to reach out to me and I can make introductions. I'm happy to do that. Um, Teresa says, I'm interested in individual interactive simulations like microscopy. Microscopy. Microscopy, sure. Microscopy. Um, how would that work price wise? So, um, those are custom priced, Teresa. So, I would recommend that you work with um, your sales rep to kind of tell them what you might need um, so that we can put something together for you. Um, because we do have simulation, uh, we have interactive like that in our database. Um, analytical chemistry. Um, I don't know that we have too much for analytical chemistry, Danielle. Yeah, nothing ready out, like what we would, definitely nothing ready out of the box, like with the lab simulations or, um, and unfortunately not very, not as much within our content collection library either. Um, analytical chemistry, I think that would be something where I would recommend you work with your sales rep to see um, if it's possible to work towards building a custom solution for you, but unfortunately, um, you know, we may have some uh, some items and assets within our content library to pull from, but we don't have anything like with those ready to go lab simulations that would be quite that level. Yeah, and then we did have David shared with us a video that he recorded. So David, I've made note of that, so I can check that out. Um, Videos are examples of 
some of the things that we can um, work with you on. So if you wanted to create a video of you doing an experiment um, and then provide the data for your students uh, to work through in a smart worksheet or a video for them to use with one of those fillable PDFs, uh, that's a great option. Um, I think we just addressed Canada. Um, David also know, wants to know how he can help develop experiments. David, you sound very enthusiastic. Could you send me an email? <laughs> I would love that. Um, <laughs> we are always looking for help. So yeah, please just reply to your webinar invitation. Um, I'm, we would love to talk to you. Yeah. Um, um, and for some of the questions I noticed about um, accessing some of the resources, um, we would in general recommend that you, or we can help you um, get in touch with your, uh, you know, sales representative because they'll be the, the point of contact to get you set up, um, sample you items and things like that. Um, Andrea and I are also happy to help do that, but that would be probably the fastest route if you know who your rep is or if you don't, we can help you. Yes, absolutely. There's also a rep finder on MacmillanLearning.com. Um, so that can also help you um, if you are looking for your rep. Um, PCAM, I think that's another category where we would recommend working with your rep to see if there are any um, solutions in our content collection for you. We don't have simulations for PCAM. Right. Um, but I just want to say, I want to thank everybody for attending. We've had really great engagement today, so I appreciate you all. I understand that we are in a time of uncertainty and everybody is trying to um, contingency plan and we may not know, um, you know exactly what we're doing for fall, but we are here to support you and give you some options and we really appreciate everyone attending. Um, so Danielle, any last words? Um, no, I think that I think we've covered everything. And just to echo what Andrea said, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, I really hope that what we showed you um, and what we talked about gave you some ideas and helps um, as you're trying to move labs online or supplement your in-person labs. Um, you know, again, I, we're unprecedented times, so we are happy that we're able to help and have resources that can help um, support instructors and students. Um, so yeah, we would definitely recommend if you know who your rep is, reach out to your rep. If you need some help with that, either use our rep finder or reach out to us. Um, we're happy to work with you all. We do understand that, um, you know, some of you may not know exactly what's happening right now. And we do have deadlines uh, for some of these things, but also we have some great out of, out of the box solutions with our lab simulations and things like that. So. We are here to support you in whatever way we can. So um, thanks everyone for their great feedback and their questions and um, everyone stay safe and healthy. <laughs>